Well, hello again. Um, first of all, I would just like to say thank you so much to all those crafters who have left um, messages on my um, YouTube videos saying how much you enjoy them. I find it um, mind-blowing, really, that my ramblings can can cheer people sometimes so really from my heart thank you so much that's that's wonderful wonderful anyway today what I want to do is to talk about um die cutting sentiments um sentiments can make or break a card I think sometimes and um trying to get it right is is important so I've got a few tips um that may help you um along the way um I am fortunate enough to have indulged myself into buying two different stamping platforms. The first one I got was um, my Misty and it was a revelation um, to be able to over stamp something if it wasn't quite an accurate um, Im image the first time and this one it's got this little well so that you can put card up into the corner and it'll stay in exactly the same place. Uh, obviously, you have the magnets to keep them in place, but um, you can always check by pushing it into a corner. However, if you are using um, a direct to the card where you've got the whole card here and you have to open it out to stamp onto the front, um, there's got to be bits hanging out. And this edge sometimes can leave a little mark if you when you press down whatever so I went and bought another just to see what it was like and this is the one I got this is um a basin I think you pronounce it v-a-e-s-s-e-n basin and this one is completely flat at the edges absolutely flat but occasionally I do find it really useful to be able to have that corner. So for some occasions, I have cut myself here a piece of fairly thick card, which I've just taped into the edge, which leaves me a corner that I can push my card into. That's one thing. The, the difference, the main difference between the two, um, the two makes of um, stamping platform that I have are the fact that the Misty you have to adjust the depth of the stamps that you're using by adding or removing this foam cushion. Thicker stamps take it out, regular polymer stamps put it in. This one doesn't need that it's just got the, the same base platform, but the hinge is on springs. So no matter what the thickness of the stamp, the springs will adjust so that it gets a good impression. And I find for quickness, that's a really useful thing to have. That and the fact that my long cards can go out either end and don't get crushed by an edge. This one, I say it's only on with tape. I can take it off if I want. Have you got that on there? Yes, you can see that. I keep forgetting to look. I am sorry about that. Anyway, what I'm going to do today is to use my stamping platform and I'll show you. Now, let's put it over there just for a moment. Um, if you're doing Christmas cards, for example, and you need... <laughs> The magnets are sticking to my watch trap. Oh, my Lord. There we go. I'm going to have to move this, I think. I just often keep a, a little magnetic sheet beside me when I'm working just to pop the um, the, the dies I'm actually working with on so, so they don't finish up in the bin. Um, but it's a bit too close to my watch strap because that's magnetic as well. So where, where did I get up to? Oh, Christmas cards, Christmas cards. Um, if you want to make um, a few the same, so you want the same greeting, um, it's easy to do it this way, in my opinion. Make a jig. So let's let's start from the, the beginning. I'm starting with my stamping platform here. Open it up. And I want to do Season's Greetings. Now, these two stamps here 
are from Paper Tray Ink. They were a gift from my friend Darnell in California. Uh, when she came over, she brought some for me, which was wonderful. Paper, uh, often postage from the States to England is quite expensive. So I want to put them onto that sized um, piece of card. And I discovered that this die, which is one from a, a set of loads, is by press cut. So I thought that die, just look on this, you can see, I, I just did this kind of business just to see, oh yes, I think that'll fit kind of stuff, you see. Okay, so that was this, the size die I wanted. So I got a piece of scrap and cut that die out of the, of the, um, the scrap. Now I'm going to arrange these two stamps in this space but when I first started to do it I'd put it down and I'd, I'd try and move it around and then put the second one and the first one would move and this is another little trick I've just done you may or you may not, you may not like this I don't know this dirty looking thing is um, a carrier sheet for my silhouette portrait um, and it had kind of lost a lot of its sticky, but it was still a bit tacky. I tried to get one of these stick it mat things online, couldn't find any in this country. So I didn't want to pay postage from the States. So I thought, I oh, know, I'll cut that in half. I'll pop that into my stamping platform and it might just hold things still a little bit. So there we go. That's in the corner. This is my corner that I made from a piece of card, taped it in. If you've got a misty, you don't need to do it. It's already there. Right. Now, arrange this where you think it would look quite nice. There's my seasons. This is my greetings. There we go. I hope my head's not getting in the way. There. Right. Now I'm going to close the lid. Press down so that it'll lift up the stamps there we go now make sure it's still in the corner that's still in the corner now i have die cut another one of those uh, from that die there and i'm going to pop that into the space just make sure it's neatly in now some ink this is versafine Black Onyx, which I really rather care for. It's been my favourite ink for a really quite a long time. I've tried lots and lots of different ones and I get most universal success with this one. Just check, there we go. And press. This is my candle holder, which is made of alabaster or some such stone and it's really quite heavy. So I use it as my, whatever they call those things. Now, can you see? That hasn't printed well enough because it's um, this is a, a textured card and I can see the texture through the uh, through the ink. So I'm going to give it another go. Having, <laughs> having been praising that other ink. There we go. We're in the right place. Down it goes and press. I'll press a bit harder this time. Still not quite good enough. I'm losing my strength, I think. Where is it? On the S mainly, in the middle. Make sure it's in position. Yep. Down it goes. And press. And that's fine. So, if you want to, and you want the same greeting on every card where lots of things finish up on the floor all you have to do pop in your jig template whatever you care to call it new piece of card and stamp away and you can do one after the other just put it in take it out fresh piece of die cut take it out okay now let's move on to something just a little bit a little bit different but not not quite the same same principle 
Just going to pop these down on there to keep them safe for a moment. The next thing I want to do is this one. This one says, happy birthday. Now, this happy birthday is one length and the die that I've been using to cut it out, which happens to be this one, it's a bit too long. So I'll show you what I do. Same thing, same sort of principle. That's into the corner. This is into the corner. Now I'm going to place this, happy birthday, neatly round one end of the aperture there. I think that's fine. Now I'm going to close it up so I can pick up the stamp with the lid. There it goes. Now I'm going to ink it up. Somewhere I've got a piece, there's one I cut earlier. Oh, I'm all so organized today. I'm, I'm falling over myself. Right, there's my piece of um, card that I die cut. This also is, is, is a, a linen texture, so it's, uh, we'll see how we get on with this. Press down. And that's lovely. Now, because I put it at one side, the other side is too long. So I'm just going to show you what I do about this. Um, I'm a bit funny about just regular cut edges. I don't like them. I find them a bit raw and nasty. So what I do, I'll show you what I do. I find that a trimmer rather than a guillotine gives a better edge for a, um, a sentiment, something like that. I always use my guillotine for cutting my card bases because you get a good crisp edge, which is great. This one gives a bit of a, it kind of bends in a bit more. I don't know, it, it finishes the edge rather better. So cut off and then what I do is using um, an embossing tool of some description, I will do this, just go over the edge to soften it. And there I've got my happy birthday. Okay, next one is one of um, these sentiments. Very fine. These are um, the greetery uh, come in a set. Um, they've got the big happy hello, thank you, and just a note. And then these little gizmos um, supplement them. Um, or you could use any other uh, die or stamp you have. So uh, this one says for you. And these are the dies which go with those sentiments. Now, <laughs> when I first had these, I really... It took me ages to match the um, the sentiment, the starter or ender, whatever it is, with the die. So what I did, I wrote what it said on the back. This one says a note to say. I used a, a fine sharpie, I think it was, to say thanks. Because each time, I mean, it just looks like a load of wiggles to me. So I, I had a bit of trouble. So that's the first thing I did was to write what actually it the, the die says. So when I came to make my jig, which is here, I put a bunch of them on there and cut them out. And as I was putting them on, I looked on the back to see what it says and just wrote it beside it so I would know straight away which one goes where. So let's just do one of those. That's just that's This is kind of by the by, but it really has saved me a lot of time. And I hope if you do that kind of thing, you know, it might save you a lot of time too. Let's just move these out of the way. We're getting a bit cluttered. Let's put that over there. Okay, so here's my stamping platform. So let's do, let's take this one out. Take that happy birthday out. And we will put in our jig. 
um, have cut spares for each of these so we can decide which one we want to do. And because I, as I was cutting them out, I wrote in what it says. It makes it much easier for me to, to find. So let's do the for you. Here it is. So what we're going to do is this. We are going to, with that out of the way, and I'll tell you why out of the way, if you've got a little recess to put your stamp into, you will find that you can centre it far more easily than actually placing it onto that in position. So use that recess to aid with, with the um, positioning. Okay, here we go. That goes in there. I'm sorry about my head, but I need to look over this to see where we're at. I think that's about it. You could, if you wanted, do all of them at the same time, but I, I don't want to do that at the minute. I just want to do just the one. Okay, now we'll put that one back in. Okay, now we will ink up. and stamp there we go and there you see it's absolutely perfectly placed in there all right take it out these jigs are a really really good idea really good idea um shall i come down so you can see more or i hold it up can you see that really perfectly placed okay one last thing last thing before we stop and that is if you want to um, cut out a sentiment that is longer than the die you want to cut it with for example like this one or I could use that one but you see it's not long enough to go in so I'll just show you what I do to make those dies fit the sentiments. So let's drag my machine a bit closer so we can see. I've got all, all the detritus from cutting out those jigs here. Here we go, bring it over. Now then, this is what I do. Let me just move this just a tad. A bit more. Here is my cutting machine. Can you see? Okay. I would put that around one end of the thing, the, the sentiment that I have stamped. And I'm going to put a bit of tape on this because showing you, I'd probably do it wrong if I don't. So let's try and get it right. We'll put, get it positioned accurately. Put it on a bit of tape and I'm going to cut part way along and I'm going to stop. Now I'm going to come back. Now you'll see that this has been cut part way. Let's go around the other side. Now I'm going to turn the card round. I'm actually going to turn the die around to keep the the sticky in the same place. Now I'm going to feel that those um, this die is in the ridges of where it's already cut and I'm just going to cut from the other end part way not to go over the end of the die and back. There we go and there we have a centered longer die cut than the die which cut it. There we go. So some more little things for you to have a go at at home if you haven't seen it before. It may be old hat to you so I do apologise in that case if it is but have fun, have a go and thanks so much for watching. <laughs>